Hi, I'm Maria from Chile. Before I tell you my amazing story, please click like and subscribe. When I was three years old, I realized that the only smart person in my family was mom. She was the only one who understood me. My dad and my older sister Elena seemed to be super dumb. One time, mom had left an apple pie on the counter and the smell was driving me crazy. I couldn't reach it, so I ran over to dad and said, Dad, bye. Uh, okay, bye. No, bye. Yeah, bye. Me, bye. Oh my God, what am I saying, idiot? Bye, bye. See me waving my hand? Go away, bye. <laughs> I burst into tears and threw his slipper at him. Luckily for me, mom came in just then. You want pie, honey? Come with me. Mom realized that I had some trouble with my speech because I mixed up sounds and words, but dad was just really mean about it. He said that girls should be perfect, and if not, they should be boys. One day, mom took me to this nice doctor she worked for as a maid. He offered to give me free speech sessions for some months, and after that, I couldn't stop talking in perfect sentences, which also annoyed my dad. Girls are meant to be seen and not heard. So shut up. Soon after I turned five, mom announced at dinner that she'd enrolled me in a school. Are you crazy? I'm not wasting money on her school. You don't even have a job. I've been saving money for Maria and she is going. She couldn't even speak properly till like forever. Wake up, mom. She's stupid. But mom completely ignored them and I was off to school the next day. Of course, dad and Elena became even bigger jerks. Once I told dad he'd spelled his name wrong on a school form and he yelled at me. Oh, you think you're smarter than your dad now? And this, it's not a mistake. I was planning to change my name tomorrow. Wow, that was the stupidest thing I'd ever heard. But to be honest, I didn't think I was smart. I didn't understand most of the stuff we were studying in school. Once in the fifth grade, the teacher asked me why I hadn't done my worksheet. I'm sorry, miss. My mom made me a sandwich last night and I needed a tissue, but we didn't have any. So I rolled the worksheet around it and it was the best sandwich I ever had. Want me to bring you some? The teacher looked at me like I was crazy. Everyone started laughing and someone yelled, gosh, she's dumb. Yeah, thank God she's pretty. Well, yes, thank God for that. Boys were always trying to flirt with me as I grew older, which didn't sit too well with some girls. Once in the seventh grade, I was blocked in the corridor by Elena and her mean best friend, Amanda. Listen, Maria, I'm sick of hearing my crush talking about how pretty you are, so I need you to go and tell him how dumb you are, okay? Yeah, just open your mouth and something stupid will come out for sure. That's what happens when you have an empty trash can instead of a brain. As the two laughed, I tried to push Amanda aside, but I swear I didn't remember I had a pencil in my hand. And she let out a very loud scream. The principal called my parents and let me off with a warning, but dad lost it. That's all she gets? I knew this school was for losers. This girl is insane and useless, and I'm putting her in a zoo. The only person who's useless in our house is the one who sits and eats all day and hasn't earned a penny in 10 years. Wait, are you talking about me? You suck. Good luck with your dumb daughter. With that, dad left us for good and our lives became better. I wish he'd taken Elena too. I had a secret I really wanted to hide from her. You see, since I wasn't good at anything, I randomly signed up for the school's music club. But it turned out I was really good at singing. Now I was spending even less time studying and was learning songs instead. If mom found that out, she would kill me. In the eighth grade, I was chosen to sing three songs on our cultural day, and I was so excited, I started singing. Who run the world, girl? I, I clapped my hands on my mouth. Why did I sound like a freaking man? I cleared my throat and started again. Who run the world, girl? And there it was, this deep, manly voice I'd never heard before. What was wrong with me? As everyone started laughing, I ran off the stage and went home in tears. I skipped school the next day, pretending to be sick. Later that evening, Elena came to my room with a food tray. Aw, poor Maria. Here, 
I got you some hot soup for your throat. Oh, thank you. Maybe it'll help you sound less like a man. You, you heard me? I wish. It wasn't there, but it's all anyone in the school can talk about. So what are you now, Maria or Mario? Shut up, Elena. Hey, watch it. Because if I tell mom you've been spending all your time singing with other losers, she's going to take you out of school. Now, where's that sweater of yours I really love? And with that, she picked it up and walked out. She was such a witch. The next morning when the bell rang, I opened the door to find my music teacher outside. I immediately pulled her into the coat closet to hide her from mom. Miss, you have to go. My mom can't find out I've been singing. But my teacher insisted that my voice was special and I had to come back to school to join a competition. She wouldn't leave till I said yes. When I went back to school, I was the butt of all the mean girl jokes. But suddenly, none of the boys wanted much to do with me either. Hey Mario, can you return that love poem I wrote for you? I want to give it to a real girl. I'm canceling our date, but you can come watch the game with me and the guys at boys night. <laughs> As I sat down in the corner to eat alone, Elena and Amanda walked over to me. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day when you'd be sitting alone. Aw, we'll have lunch with you. And with that, Elena dumped a whole plate of spaghetti on my head. OMG, what is wrong with you two? Why do you hate me so much? Oh, you need a reason? I'll give you a hundred. Number one, you are dumb, but pretty. And the other 99 mm, are the same. You're even dumber than I am because all you want is the attention of some stupid boys. Well, they're all yours. Go marry them. Have their idiot babies. Whatever you do, just leave me alone. I stormed out of there angrily. I was walking down the hallway when I heard my favorite song ah. from the music room. It was my teacher on the piano, and I started to sing along. And this time, it was just my usual voice. After that, I started training with my teacher for the competition, and she taught me how to tune both my voices to perfection. She was convinced I would win with my unique talent. But one day when I was alone at home, I was practicing in my room when suddenly mom barged in. Where's the boy? What boy? Mom, the boy who was just singing that cheesy song to you and you were singing it right back. Stop acting, Maria. I heard you both. I had no choice but to tell mom about my singing and the dual voices. Just then, Elena came in and mom was super mad at us both. I don't break my back cleaning people's toilets, so you can go and be a dumb singer, Maria. I'm going to take you out of school if you keep getting such bad grades. And you, Elena? You knew all along and you hid this from me? You're both grounded for a week. No matter how much we protested, Mom wouldn't hear another word. But there was no way I was missing that competition. A few days later, I sneaked out and my teacher drove me to the venue. To my delight, I won first prize and I was given a thousand dollar check. And that was a lot of money in my country. Mom couldn't be mad at me now. But when I got home, I was in for a shock. There were five men in the lounge twice as big as mom. This house isn't yours anymore. Your husband mortgaged this property long ago and we're taking over now. Get out. Before we knew it, all our things were out on the street, and so were we. We were homeless, all thanks to the worst dad on the planet. We camped out in a nearby park for the night. As we lay down to sleep on some benches, I went to mom and took out the check from my pocket. Mom, I went to the competition and won first prize. You can take this to the bank tomorrow and we can pay for a place to stay till we figure out something. Mom looked shocked and then she hugged me tight. Oh, Maria, this will really help me right now. So thank you. Come, sing for me. I want to hear you. Just then, I heard some sweet flute music from the distance, and I started singing that song in my style. Now that it's raining more than ever, know that we'll still have each other. You can stand under my umbrella. You can stand under my umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. When I opened my eyes, Mom looked stunned. Suddenly, we spotted an old man running towards us, holding a flute in his hand. Wow, you're such an amazing talent. I've never seen someone singing like that. Who are you? And why are you here? 
I told him we'd suddenly become homeless and he immediately offered us a place in his house. When we got there, our jaws dropped open. It looked like a millionaire's mansion. I went to sleep on the biggest, softest bed I could ever imagine. In the morning, we discovered that the old man was a millionaire who came from a family of musicians. And what he said next left me shook. I own my own music production company, Maria, and I want to give you a record deal. You're going to take the world by storm, I'm telling you. Of course, I had to take up the offer. As mom and I jumped for joy, Elena suddenly hugged me so hard I could barely breathe. Oh, my beautiful, talented sister, I knew you were special from the day you were born. I had to make a huge effort not to punch her face. I instantly shot to fame with my debut single, and suddenly, I was the talk of the city. In a few months, I was able to afford our own place and move out of the kind man's mansion. I hired house help for mom and decided to enroll Elena and myself in a better school. But Elena was super jealous and she couldn't hide it anymore. I don't need your charity, you dumb witch. I hate you. Always have, always will. I have a boyfriend now and I'm moving out to live with him. And just like that, she left. And well, I can't say I miss her. I have my huge fans around the world to make it up to me. Hey, I'm Danny, and I want to tell you what happened with my boyfriend Jason. I met Jason at a friend's party when I was 16. I couldn't help but notice how hot he was. Girls were hitting on him from every corner. But then he came up to me and asked me to dance. Yes! The other girls looked so jealous their eyes were going to pop out. The next day, we went out to the movies, but we didn't see much of the film. We were too busy making out in the back row, and oh my god, he was a good kisser. Jason and I started seeing each other like every day. He was so sweet, always buying me presents and sending me texts to tell me how much he loved me. Sounds like the perfect boyfriend, right? Only problem was, Jason could get really jealous. Like, there was one time we went for dinner. After the waiter took our order, Jason told me to stop flirting with him. I wasn't flirting with him. Ugh, all I did was say thank you. But that was enough to put Jason in a bad mood for the rest of the night. When Jason drove me home, I told him he was being ridiculous. I'm sorry, baby, said Jason. It's just, I love you so much, I can't bear the thought of you being with another dude. It was hard dealing with Jason's temper, but I really loved him, so I always forgave him. We'd been seeing each other for about six months when we were in the den at Jason's house, playing video games, when this gorgeous guy walked in. Oh my god, he was hot. He was tall, with piercing blue eyes, and he was wearing a soldier's uniform. I mean, Jason was hot, but this guy was on another level. Lucas, yelled Jason, running over to hug the man. Danny, this is my brother Lucas. I went over to meet him. Lucas held out his hand for me to shake, and I swear I felt like fainting when our fingers touched. Lucas told us he was home on leave from the army, and Jason said we should all hang out together. Jason asked if I minded because he didn't get to see Lucas much since he signed up. Did I mind? Are you kidding me? I got to hang out with a hot guy, and Jason wasn't going to get jealous. We had so much fun together in the couple weeks Lucas was home. We went to Six Flags, went out for dinner almost every night, and went to the movies. But the best times were when we were over at Jason's, and to be honest, some things got pretty steamy between me and Jason. Like, when the three of us watched TV, Lucas would kind of rub his thigh against mine or play with my hair without Jason noticing. This was wrong, but it made me want him so bad. On Lucas's last day of leave, we were all in the den when Jason remembered he was supposed to pick something up for his mom. He asked if I'd be okay staying with Lucas. Like he had to ask any excuse to spend time with his hot older brother. When Jason left to go to the store, Lucas came and sat right next to me. He was so close, our knees were touching. My heart started beating faster, and I bit my lip. I knew he wanted me, and all I wanted to do was kiss him. Thank God Lucas made up my mind for me. He leaned forward and kissed me passionately. Oh. My. God. I liked making out with Jason, but this was just… wow. With Jason, I feel like I'm with a boy, but Lucas? He was a man, and he really knew what he was doing. Jason and I had fooled around a lot, but we'd never gone all the way. I didn't feel ready, but at that moment, 
All I wanted was to be with Lucas. Things started getting hot and heavy, but then we heard Jason coming home. Quickly, I straightened out my clothes and Lucas moved away from me. When Jason walked into the den, I thought he'd know straight away what we'd been doing, but he just smiled and walked over to kiss me. Did you two have fun while I was gone? He asked. Er, yeah, I said. When Lucas went back to the army, he started emailing and texting me. His messages were so romantic, and sometimes they were his hot nudes. He'd tell me all about what he wanted to do to me when he got back home again. I really felt like I was falling in love, you know? I always deleted his messages. It would break Jason's heart to know I was flirting with his brother, and I did love Jason. Anyway, Lucas was away in the army. It wasn't like I was having a real affair with him or anything, we were just talking. But then it happened. Lucas messaged me to say he was leaving the army and coming home for good. I felt such a mix of emotions. I was excited that Lucas was coming back, nervous about what would happen between us and worried that Jason would suspect something. I didn't have to worry. Jason planned a surprise party for Lucas to welcome him home. There were loads of people there, and there was no chance for me to spend any time with Lucas. In fact, he barely spoke to me. If he hadn't sent all those sexy messages, I would think I'd imagined the time we kissed. And then it happened. Lucas yelled out for us all to be quiet because he had something to say. He held out his hand, and some girl I'd never seen before stepped forward to take it. This is my fiance, Sherry, said Lucas. She's the reason I left the army, and I want to spend more time with her. Lucas was engaged? I felt like my heart had shattered into a million pieces. I'd spent so long dreaming about kissing Lucas again, and he was with someone else. I know, I know, I shouldn't have been upset. I was with Jason, and we had a good relationship. It's just that I felt like I had something special with Lucas, and I wanted to see if it would go somewhere. Oh well, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Now Lucas was home, I saw a lot more of him, but Sherry was with him most of the time. It wasn't the same as before. We would go out on double dates together. The more time I spent with Sherry, the more I wondered what Lucas saw in her. She wasn't all that pretty. She was flat-chested and really dumb. She laughed at everything Lucas said, even if it wasn't funny. Lucas should have been engaged to me. It would be so much better for him, but then it happened. I was over at Jason's when Lucas walked in. He told Jason their mom had asked him to drive her to the store because her car wouldn't start. Jason asked me if I wanted to go with them, but I said no. This was my chance to talk to Lucas and find out what was going on. When Jason left, at first it was a bit awkward. I didn't know what to say, but then Lucas said, I'm sorry. He told me that he'd only proposed to Sherry because she told him she was pregnant, but then she lost the baby. He felt guilty and didn't want to hurt her, but he'd been thinking about me all the time. I know you're still with Jason, he said, but I want you. That was all I needed to hear. We fell into each other's arms, ripping our clothes off. That first time with Lucas was incredible. He really knew how to please a woman. By now, Jason and I had been sleeping together for a while, but he wasn't great in bed. Lucas had experience, and it showed. After that, Lucas and I spent every moment we could together. I couldn't get enough of him. His body was amazing. So toned and buff after all his time in the army. I was head over heels in love. But then, I missed my period. I knew it wasn't Jason's baby because we always used protection, but Lucas and I weren't as careful. When I told Lucas, he was so sweet. He said he'd leave Sherry and we'd get married. He didn't want his baby to grow up without him. The worst part was telling Jason. I still cared about him, and he was my baby's uncle after all. Jason was devastated. I'd never seen a man cry before. I felt so uncomfortable. I hope he cheats on you one day, he said. Lucas and I got married at the courthouse. It was only a small ceremony. Jason wouldn't come, and neither would his parents, because they didn't approve of me running off with Lucas. My parents thought I was too young to get married and have a baby, so they didn't come either. I didn't care. Lucas and I were going to be together forever, but it wasn't long before things changed. I put on a lot of weight while I was pregnant. Lucas started making comments about how fat I was. Whenever I ate anything that wasn't a salad, he'd make snarky comments or snort like a pig. When our daughter, Mia, was born, I thought things would go back to how they were, but Lucas didn't want to spend any time with her, and as 
for changing diapers? Forget it. I was really depressed, so I started to comfort E, which made things even worse. Lucas threatened to leave me if I didn't lose weight, but his negative comments only made me eat more, and I ended up gaining a hundred pounds. The more he called me names, the more I ate. I hated the way I looked, but I couldn't stop eating. It was the only thing that made me happy. After he left the army, Lucas couldn't get a good job, so we had to work as a barista to pay the bills. He started spending more and more time at work. He said he was getting overtime to pay for the baby, but whenever I asked him for money to buy formula, he said he didn't have any. I started to suspect he was having an affair, so I took Mia and waited outside his work one day. Sure enough, when he left the coffee shop, he was holding hands with another woman. They kissed before getting into his car and driving off. I raced home and started packing things for me and Mia. There was no way I was going to stay with someone who was cheating on me. When Lucas came home, my bags were in the hallway. What's going on? He asked. I know you're seeing someone else, I yelled. I'm leaving, and I'm taking Mia with me. Lucas begged me to stay. He promised he'd break up with the other woman and said he loved me more than ever. He took me to bed. We fell asleep in each other's arms, but when I woke up, I was alone. Lucas had left, and he'd taken Mia with him. He left me a note which said, there's no way I'm letting my daughter grow up with a fat pig for a mother. I had to go to court to get my daughter back, but I couldn't afford a lawyer. Lucas's family paid for a lawyer for him, and he said I was a bad mother who was a danger to our daughter. He won full custody. I know some people think I deserve it for cheating on Jason with his brother, but I've learned my lesson. I'll never cheat on anyone ever again. Now, I'm working two jobs to save enough money to hire a lawyer. I won't rest until I have my daughter back.